Wow. <laughs> All right. What's up, everybody? <laughs> waiting for the stream to kick in. Waiting for you to find me because you were on the other video, I guess. I don't know what's going on. Today was YouTube. Today was all YouTube. It said something about test computer, blah, 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 something or other. Can't kick over my uh, reference to test or something like that. So it was all freaking out about it. I think we got it sorted out, though. Waiting for you guys to hop on in here. How was your Friday? My Friday was full of highs and crippling lows. <laughs> but uh, I woke up sick Monday. And Tuesday was rough. Um, basically went to work for a couple hours and then came home and slept for 14 hours. Monday and Tuesday was pretty much the same like that. So anyway, I am glad to be here. Glad that it is all said and corrected and good. Thank you so much for tuning in to Friday. Whew. Looks like people are starting to come on in here. So there we go. People are making it into the chat. <clears throat> Excellent. There'll be a little bit of lag, but it'll sort itself out as, as things get kicking over. Let me get my mic right up in front of my face. All right, everybody's in or starting to make it in. So sorry about that. Let's flip on over. So how's it going, everybody? Oh, this is the wrong uh, chat. I should have been messing with chats when I was doing that opening, but I didn't. So we'll do it live as I often do. Like that, like that. Boom. Should be fixed. I'm going to get right into this beer Oh, is it not fixed? Doesn't seem to be fixed. <clears throat> I can fix it. Oh, yeah, that is definitely not the right thing to paste into there. That's not going to work at all. Hey, there it is. <laughs> K8MRD Radio Stuff's in the house. What's up? Hey, from Ohio. What's up, Nathaniel? Hello from Ohio. What's up? Very, very nice. CB Lantin was in the house. Carol. Uh, big shout out to Carol, got her general, I think yesterday. Uh, Hell Buns got general and tech last weekend and now camping the FCC website as, as one does. Great, everybody's seeing me and people are starting to roll in. That's very, very nice. What a pain. I don't know what happened with that whole thing. So sorry about that. Sorry you guys had to redirect your, your whole, your viewing area over to this side. But it looks like it's good now. We're getting some high-quality pixels flying out of here. And hopefully some people find it to the right place. There's Carol. Congratulations to you. You deserve it. So, okay, this is the Ham Radio Crash Course now that we're up and running. Uh, we try to just talk about all kinds of different stuff to move amateur radio forward by getting more people involved, like Carol, who just upgraded to General, which is awesome. Uh, the idea is we talk about different stuff. Oftentimes, new stuff to me that I spend time researching so I can bring it to you in a way that, you know, at least maybe get you started or maybe get you down the road for something you didn't know. Good evening, Cody. Good luck tomorrow with your test, uh, with your tech, Robert. Yeah, absolutely. Good luck. Colorado Springs. Oh, nice. Colorado Springs. So remember, we will have a Discord after chat. We will have a Discord after chat where we can talk about all kinds of ham radio stuff. Oftentimes, it's uh, just a bunch of kooky fun with everybody that's out there. Carol will be out there. She's one of the regulars. I haven't seen uh, Zach yet. Uh, Zach usually in the chat, and he'll post the link. If we've got one of the admins, feel free to post the link. I had to go do the live event now instead of the event, so sorry for everybody that's back on the other side. That's a major pain in the butt. I apologize for that. Looks like people are starting to make it over, though. Wyoming Ham. There he is. What's up? <laughs> Greetings from Manila. What's up? Very, very cool. I love it when we get like the worldwide uh, watchers in. So homework for today, we're talking about emergency preparedness and specifically for ham radio. So um, perhaps acknowledge the area you live in and what potential emergencies you might have to deal with, right? So think about that. Think about, you know, what you may very likely have to face and what kind of communication um, would be useful to you in that situation, right? That's what I would recommend. So what else we got? We will be doing call-ins, hopefully, towards the end here. So if you have a question as I'm going along, you think I'm way off base. I'm open to criticism. Come throw it at me. So the news today. Um, have you seen my emergency communications series? I, it's not in the links right now. I had them in the cards. But if you type in, uh, if you go to my channel and look for emergency preparedness or after the fact, it will be in the description, a link to go check that out. Uh, please do so. That gives you a preface of not just ham radio, actually more open comms. 
So, yeah, everybody's rolling in now. Hey, Ham Radio Concepts is in the house. What's up? Hey, I haven't talked to you in a while, Eric. Hope you're doing well. Um, let's see. We're going to have the Ubit X giveaway. So we were very, very fortunate. We had somebody uh, call in and say they would give us a Ubit X, Microbit X, to give away on a stream or something I deem fit. I have decided I am going to give it away in conjunction with the Ham Radio or the HRCC and Friends meetup at Hamvention at the Warped Wing Brewery on that Saturday at starting at 6 p.m. You do not have to be there to be involved in this giveaway. Two weeks before the event, I will post it on Discord, and you can go in there and click the little horn, and you'll be entered into the contest. So you don't have to be there. There are two streams on your channel. Yeah, there's uh, that's part of the problem today. Part of the fun. <laughs> there, uh, I couldn't make the event work. YouTube's having some major problem. Oh, it says I'm live now over on... No, that's okay. That's where we want it to be. I don't know. We'll sort it out later. Hopefully everybody's finding the right place. <laughs> Sorry about that for the confusion. I don't know what the problem with YouTube is. They've got a major, I don't know, stick up their butt. I've tried three different ways of streaming into it today, and only one of them worked, the one that I'm on right now. Also check Discord. Oh, boy. So now... I don't know what's going on. Anyway, I checked the account side. I'll look good. So, hey, it happens. Uh, anyway, um, what was I going to say? Yeah, so you don't have to be in attendance to get it working, uh, to get in on the contest. It's all connected to uh, the Discord. So you'll be able to get it that way. So very cool. All right, let me get back to my notes so I don't forget. Uh, let's see. So... Uh, along with the meetup, reminder, that's May 18th, 6 p.m. at the Warped Wing Brewery in Dayton, Ohio. And we will have uh, Hotels on the Air. The link will be in the description. But if you go to hotelsontheair.com, that is the co uh, kind of contest that we're putting together. We've got Dom, who's leading it up. He's one of the admins over on the Discord side. So make sure you go check that out. And, of course, W5KUB.com every Tuesday, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, does his live stream. And he has a massive event for Hamvention where he streams the whole way to, the whole way back, and all during the event and has tons and tons of giveaways. So I'll be over there. I'll be going around all over the place. So if you see me, you might know my face, but I don't know yours. So come up and say hi and let me know what you've been finding there at Hamvention because I am – Super, super stoked uh, on it. I'm really excited to get out there. So anyway, um, I want to let's I'll go ahead and slide it over to the slides here for a second. I'm going to change the, uh, the text really fast. I'm going to open this beer. <laughs> this one was uh, my wife got these. So this is from Firestone Walker. So I initially thought this has got to be OK. Eh, could be wrong. This is a Rosalie Beer Rosé. <laughs> beer Rosé. I don't know how I uh, feel about this. We're going to try it. Uh, like I said, I was sick for most of the week, so I don't feel like drinking a lot of beers or uh, having a big heavy beer or anything like that. So wife had these. I'm going to try it. So cheers. So here's the idea of how this whole thing got started. In my um, delirious fever lit ridden mind uh monday evening i was talking to my wife and i asked her i was like do you know do you ever have dreams or have like you ever think about like an emergency situation like what you would do do you ever have a dream or like you're kind of in an emergency situation and you know there's always something that you think about in the morning you're like oh man i wish i would have handled that better or something like that and she was like no i never you know ne never do i have anything like that happen i was like oh man that's fortunate for you that's pretty awesome um, so <clears throat> <clears throat> I, however, do have that happen. And one such instance is kind of what we're going to talk about. This is a hypothetical thing. And really, like I said in the beginning, the homework that you may have from this live stream is think about something that could actually affect you and the type of communications you would have to potentially rely on. So without further ado, um, also, uh, I did grow up in Whittier in 1986, 87, when the Whittier Narrows quake happened. So I am uh, pretty, pretty versed in kind of being in the middle of something when something goes down. And that kind of led me to my 
course of somewhat trying to be prepared when different things happen. Um, from that, I ended up getting involved with ham radio. I'm now in CERT. Uh, I'm active in a local club, club, an emergency preparedness group that does nets, and we've had multiple race events that we've supported. I've never actually deployed in an emergency event um, local or any kind, really, with amateur radio, but try to prepare for it. Try to work at that. So without further ado, let's see. Do I have that going? I do. So here's the situation. Some localized emergency. Consider like a thousand square miles of affected range. Um, affected, not affected. That's wrong. Uh, consider that is just smaller than like Yosemite National Park. So pretty big. That could be pretty massive. Infrastructure in this hypothetical situation. Power's out. The internet, gone. Water, out. Wells are fine. Uh, first responders stretch to unavailable, um, stretch to unavailable in some parts, and law enforcement is completely overwhelmed. Medical, stretch to unavailable in some parts as well. So you're basically on your own, okay? So this is that hypothetical thing. Um, you can make a screenshot of that or commit it to memory and just think later on this weekend, whatever. What would you want to have? Like, what would you want to have if you were um, without power? without some access to emergency responders and you came across some people that were hurt, what would you do? How would you want to communicate? So expected communication needs. We've talked about tactical and strategic, right? Oh, hey, Franklin Lewis. Thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Uh, what is he getting? Let's start it off. Need an IDG Z100 uh, Pro for a go kit reviewed if you get a chance. <laughs> Well, I'll save up and get one. Um, I do actually need a tuner to go along with that 891, so that's not a bad idea. So I will look into that. Save up some money and buy another tuner. At least portable. Portable would be good. Yeah, I could I could use a portable tuner. So tacticals, uh, tactical comms is like search and rescue, right? You are communicating to someone that's out doing search and rescue if you are involved to do it. Likely, there will be other groups involved that can do that, but again, if emergency services are overwhelmed, or you are involved with a cert group that's local in your neighborhood and they're doing a walkthrough in your neighborhood, um, you could very easily find yourself running comms from people that are going house to house, who they find, um, taking notes on the medical conditions of the people they're discovering, what kind of situation they're in, what level of care they need, etc. That's a common thing we do in cert when we practice. So it makes no, it makes no mind to just say, oh, yeah, why not use radius for that? It's way easier than like coming out, reporting to an incidents commander that's outside. Why not just phone that in via a radio, like a two-way, right? And then you got strategics, right? Strategic comm is like a radio message or a radiogram. We'll talk about a radiogram form in a little bit. And then just running traffic, messages in and out of the disaster area for people that are looking to hear from loved ones. We saw this happen in the multiple hurricanes down in the Caribbean or Caribbean. And, you know, it, it happens all the time, right? Whenever there's a major event, um, AM radio operators get involved for just running traffic in and out. So, so uh, I'll take a quick side uh, little part here to say learn from those that are smarter than us. There's actually a really good amount of lists that you can get. Just search, you know, Aries ham radio list or Aries emergency preparedness list or don't search races uh, emergency preparedness list because you're going to get races emergency preparedness list and it's going to be really confusing. So keep that in mind when you go about doing it. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, where are my slides? There they are. Where's my web? Hmm. Hmm. I see. So hold on. I'm going to change that to this cool checklist page. So uh, this is just one checklist. I want you to note the first thing that it's talking about is uh, VHF, UHF basics kit. Like that's the first thing they're talking about. That's like the most important thing to them. In fact, let me see if I make it a little bit bigger. Hey, that's a lot better. Right, so you've got two meter dual band handheld speaker mic, two meter dual band mobile radio, uh, earphone, headset, right? So you can, if you're out in the noise, the wind, you want to be able to hear, actually getting something in your ear is good. A mic with a dead cat. What's a dead cat? Uh, this is a dead cat, right? It's a fluffy little thing that goes on microphone. So there's your mic, 
and there's your dead cat, right? So that goes on your microphone to make sure that you're not getting a lot of wind noise blast out your your YouTube, or your, I'm reading the chat, um, <laughs> your voice coming into the microphone. Extra coaxial cables, battery pack backup, uh, alkaline batteries, rechargeable batteries, not just the like lithium pack that it comes with, but extra batteries, right? Here's another one. This one's pretty good. I like the way they laid this out. So they've got like required items, recommended items. This is Santa Clara, which is the Clara repeater operators that I've talked about before. Uh, let's see. So again, two meter, 70 centimeter. That's going to be the primary thing people are going to talk about. 12 hour go kit, right? They're going to break down the equipment that you need. Uh, cigarette lighter socket, po uh, power poles, vehicle battery terminals. So there's a redundancy theme going on. Douglas says, FEMA, OEM, CERT, Aries, Racy, Skywarn, Noah, all teams are interested in joining. Uh, yes, go join those. And we'll talk about those in a little bit too. <laughs> Ham Radio TV says, I can't wait till we lose everything. I don't want anyone to get hurt, of course, in parentheses. But then my wifey will approve the tower. <laughs> well, that's a good point. All right. So it seems like there might be a simul <laughs> chat going on on another YouTube page. I apologize for that. It's kind of out of my control right now. I don't know what's going on with YouTube. They're working on something. But uh, we got it working on this side. So what was that form that I mentioned? Oh, wrong chat. Oh. Yeah, totally wrong chat on stream. What's up with that? Bloop. There we go. <laughs> yeah, I can't get out in front of myself. I had everything set up, and then I clicked preview, and it just went. Pfft. YouTube said, nope, I can't make this test thing go. Um, you can't stream right now. So I don't know what's going on with events, but live stream immediately works fine. So here's your radio message. Um, this is what you would call a radiogram, uh, an ICS-213. Basically breaks down, maintains some kind of standard decorum with how you would provide radio messages back and forth. Uh, this can be sent via WinLink and other modes or just right through, right through the microphone. You can even do it with CW, but there's a different form for CW. Okay. Next. There we go. Okay. So, principal radios were already mentioned. VHF, UHF. They're most prevalent radios to deploy during emergency. Um, thousand square miles, though, right? So, the size is a little bit smaller than Yosemite. VHF, UHF are going to be useful for the tactical comms, but they're not going to be the most effective necessarily at the long-range stuff. So you might have to step into HF radio. What we're looking at is one of the ARRL go kits that they have produced. Um, what do they call those? One more. Where is my slide for that? Uh, Hamade. So this is a Hamade kit. So technicians are generally good to operate VHF, UHF equipment, means there's way more operators that, that you can use. Uh, they're cost effective, decent range for line of sight, easy to replace, and easy to deploy in mass. So you can see that, that's like what, uh, 10 ICOMs that are just sitting there? 10 ICOMs and two, VN, two mobile stations. Pretty easy to deploy with that, right? So things to look for in VHF, UHF radios. You want easy to power and operate at the same time, if possible. Most radios, na radios, radios nowadays can transmit under charge, but some can't. So a uh, recommendation if you're looking for a radio, you may not want the FT60 here because when you have the AC adapter plugged into it and key up, it'll restart the radio. However, in a drop-in charger, it will work, but you could be messing with the battery chemistry if you're doing that. Other radios don't have that problem. Some do. The advantage of the FT60, though, is you can run it with a uh, AA battery pack and you can get 5 watts output out of it. So there's a give and a take there. There's a balancing act that we're going to talk about that becomes more of a problem when you get to HF. But features you're looking for in an HT, and again, we're, we're talking about this kind of at a high level so that you can kind of uh, 
deploy this at different companies radio options i'm not going to point you at just one radio and say yeah no buy this this is the best for emergencies no i'm just going to say if you're thinking about this potential problem that you could be facing why not uh, think of these particular functionalities features that the radio could have zachary says sorry i'm late the soda activation had a 13 mile round trip hike just finished congratulations i hope you uh successfully activated uh yep Okay, so what do you want? GPS APRS is a really good idea for not just tracking your location, but sending messages, sending email, sending text, if that level of infrastructure is available to you. Digital DMR, the AC System Fusion. The advantages of those is there's going to possibly be less of them out there, possibly in the group that you're working with, your CERT group or your ARIES group or whatnot. So you'll be able to communicate with them pretty easily just doing simplex. Simplex DMR is great. It's really, really nice. Um, downsides, though, is then you're not going to be able to hear everybody else. So you may need to have channels programmed on the radio to be able to switch, a dual watch kind of thing. Um, that's fine. You can handle that with most of these DMR radios today, and definitely Yaesu System Fusion will cover that. And then, uh, you know, for example, where's my my FT2DR? If you are in the same frequency as other uh, radios, you can hit this GM button, and it will basically point out and follow along with other radio operators operating that similar radio um, around you. So it's really nice in that sense because you can then follow exactly what's going on, keep tabs with people, pretty easy. And then a lot of these and the ones you should probably definitely be focusing on are weather or splash resistant so that you have uh, an okay time if you get caught out in a little bit of rain or whatever. Uh, that's going to be better for HTs. That's going to be, oh, hey, say no to Kilo says, learn to program your radios without software on itself. Very good point, which is one of the reasons why having a radio with a keypad is also a really good idea. Uh, being able to program your radio is really, really important. And then have extra batteries with you. I think the weather thing is self-evident. While I like Baofengs, and you could probably have a whole lot of them, um, you don't want to be deploying those out in the weather. So. Things to look for in a VHF, UHF mobile, very much the same thing as the HTs, right, as far as functionality goes. But you're going to want something that's either easy to mount in a car, which if you if you've already have a mobile, most likely what I'm thinking might be going on is you probably already have an audio, a, a mobile in your car. That's already there. You're not going to be ripping that thing out in an emergency. You're basically going to be having a second mobile radio that you can deploy out somewhere, on a table, uh, in a rack, somewhere, for a mobile installation. So you have 50 watts of power available to you, right? 50 watt output. You're not going to go tearing up your dashboard and, and pulling a radio out. So that means you don't really want necessarily a radio that's good to go into a car. You want one that's going to be good on a table. Um, there are multiple VHF, UHF radios that are good sitting on a table just fine, you know, and maybe buy a power supply or something like that. So keep that in mind. It's not really going to be a car-operated mobile. It could be. Um, it could be rack-mounted, right? So keep that in mind, how you're going to operate it. Is it going to be sitting level to you? Are you going to be looking down at it? Is it on a table? You're going to be looking down. Contrast issues. A lot of mobile screens, some of them, depending on where your angle of your head is, is going to give you a weird contrast kind of thing. So keep that in mind. Ease of connection to a headset, if you're going to disconnect it and it just sits on a table, for example, that's important. Is the mic connected to the headset or does it connect to the body? That's a major pain in the butt for a mobile, but if you wanted to just have the headset on a table or the headset just uh, in the front of your rack, your go rack, then that body is submerged in the back of the rack and that's where the mic connects, then you're going to have to have an extra mic line. So keep that in mind. Um, ease of rack mounting, I mentioned. Power draw. So... One of the things that you're going to want to keep in mind is what is the power draw of all the radios that you're going to potentially be deploying? Because there is a, a draw level to it that you're going to be like, hey, I need to keep an eye on this because I'm going to be operating for eight hours um, during the day, monitoring at night. Who knows? Maybe heavily uh, activate or operating at night. So you're either going to need enough battery, and if you need to calculate that, which you absolutely will, which we'll talk about in a little bit, you're going to want to keep an eye out for a radio that is good on the receive side. Yeah, and James uh, mentions it again. I mentioned it earlier, but 
APRs rigs allow you to send text message emails and tweets during an emergency even works via ISS and other satellites there you go I only do emergency communications through the ISS so hopefully you'll be passing over ahead shortly and antennas so you know um, I'll, it's really easy with the VHF UHF stuff it's gonna get harder as we get to HF that's kind of why I saved it for the end here ground planes are great um, just those you know PVC looking pipes with the three little spikes hanging off the bottom of it those are great um, I would stick with those put them on a pole if you have an easy up they're really easy to just strap on the side of an easy up I did that for field day multiple times super easy to do that way and then verticals right verticals are good too so for mobiles keep that in mind <clears throat> so on power um, I do have to say, this is just a high-level thing. If you want more information on power, do go watch OH8STN on his YouTube channel. There's a pretty easy uh, equation, and it looks complicated, but breaking it down is really just 0.7 is a percentage of time. 70% of the time the radio is on, it's going to be in receive mode. The draw for receive is 1.5 amps. So you take that, multiply your number, and then you add that to 0.3, which is 30% of the time, times 20 amps. That's the output at 100 watts for a Yesu FT891. You add all that up, multiply it by 6, which is the, so call it hours of operation, 6 hours of operating. It's roughly 37 amp hours of power that you could potentially be using. That's it in a nutshell. It gets way more complicated than that, and when you really want to start like tuning your station you'll start to look at things that can help uh, keep that keep that uh, battery life available so I hope that was not complicated but that breaks the whole thing down so 0.7 percentage of time in receive 1.8 is the draw on, on receive um, 0.3 is percentage of time in transmit 20 amps is the draw on transmit to the battery and then six hours of operation so 37 amps so somebody just said, James said solar. You're right. Solar. Let's talk about that. So factoring relative battery use is easy, but then there's little things like your wiring that you use, the amount of time you're transmitting can um, cause something where the battery drains faster. To offset this, look at alternative power sources like a generator um, or solar panels. I like the Yamaha 2000. I think it's much better than the Honda 2000. It has features that the Honda does not, like a fuel gauge so you don't have to open the thing, like a fuel cutoff valve on the carburetor. Muy bien. It also can be set up with a tri-fuel system that the Honda, I don't believe, can, but the Yamaha definitely can. So I think the Yamaha is a better, better use for that. And then solar panels. So you really got a couple of options. Um, and the reason why I go with the Yamahas and the Hondas is they are inverter-based generators, not stator-based generators, which is very helpful. So a uh, as far as solar panels go, I like the Renergy 100-watt panels I have. They work great. They're not portable-friendly. So unless you got like a camper or like a go vehicle where they're forever on the top, you're going to need something a little bit more flexible. Again, go watch Julian. He has videos on the flexible biofilm solar panels, and uh, BioNO, I believe, now has a model out. Solar panels are a an interesting thing, but to me it's a rather straightforward thing. You, you have it. It puts out this much power. You put it in the appropriate face of the sun at best you can because that affects efficiently, efficiency greatly, and then you have to have a charge controller. Because the charge controller is going to prevent discharging into the panel. It's going to have, usually the good ones, or the decent ones at least, will have a connection for the load side and a connection for the battery bank that you're charging. Which is great, because if you have a load connection, you can take one of these, which is just a simple power pole breakout connection. Take one of these guys, um, connect this you know, close by your your charge controller or midway between your charge controller and your battery or your your radio and then just connect your charge controller into this and then connect everything else into it you don't want to go too crazy because you'll overload the power um, and you, you won't be able to turn anything on but if you're just operating a VHF radio and an HF radio like a 7300 they work great so I use those and they work wonderfully so okay okay I have a radio 
Now what? Well, I recommend, again, you're thinking about this hypothetical situation, local to your town or your region. What do you do next? I've got the radio. Well, that's the first step of the battle. Yeah, Bear Bass says lots of fuses. I agree. First step of the battle is maybe collecting this stuff. We're actually, really, the first step of the battle should be look for local MCOM groups. Join in on nets and, if possible, attend and support events. Race events can be a great experience because they're generally low on the emergency side, high on the preparedness and operation side of it. So what you do here to deploy a system out in a field or out on a race somewhere, this long-distance race, and that support you give relaying traffic in a lower stress environment is going to be very, very helpful for you to ma remain cool, learn something, get that in your brain so that when you, you know, ever have to deal with this, you'll have some kind of background and you'll have something to know on. So builds confidence, right? Traffic handling and more important, rig setup and use when out in the field. So that's the pre-work. Okay, continued. I got a radio. Now what? Familiarize yourself with the radio form I mentioned. Um, it's good to know, good to understand, and you don't need an emergency to do that. You don't need to be in an emergency club. Just look up uh, ICS-213. And further, it will be the base of anything sent over Winlink and some other digital modes in the rare cases they are used, right? Now, classes. Go ahead and look up FEMA ICS-100, 200, 800, and 700. Those are the classes that they use for Ares, but in general, they're just really good classes to have for like incidence command and chain of command and understanding how certain things in an emergency goes down. Zachary Painter says, just be careful on the group of the different groups. The one locally is great at running a net on a repeater, but I have never heard them ever even try to use simplex. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. That is interesting. Yeah, I mean, that could be a thing. Yep. I didn't really think about that. That's kind of odd. You'd think that they would. Anyway, we used to just do simplex nets. Um, we'd have, was it Clara? Did we use Clara repeater? For a while, we were using Clara repeater before the sheriff station got their repeater. And then uh, we were doing simplex nets. So simplex nets are nice because you end up uh, like helping out people across the city. So one guy's trying to make a contact to somebody else and you start you know, playing telephone, which is good. You're relaying traffic, right? That's kind of the point, particularly with VHF, UHF. Okay, so what about HF? So this is where we're going to take a little tangent. So one of the advantages of VHF, UHF over HF is they're relatively simple antenna setups. You go buy a bag that has an antenna in it, you bolt it to the side of the thing, and you go, I'm done. I'm basically finished. Um, yeah, sure, you should check your SWR, connect a meter to it, verify it's good, but it pretty much works, right? Not so much with HF. I know that there are uh, instances where there you can do that, but it's by and large a little more work, a lot more effort. My mic is super low. It better not be. Oh, sorry about that. Hope that's a little bit better. Not to mention any digital modes, right? Um, HF is going to be, depending on the radio, you have a lot easier to get into digital modes, which could be helpful. So the HF antenna. There are many options that we have discussed, right, in all our previous live streams. You've got cut dipoles, you've got end feds, you've got loops, you've got portable verticals. you even got beams, portable beams that people can use in an emergency situation. I have, uh, these are just four examples. There are many more examples, and I never discredit the ingenuity of amateur radio operators to put up some crazy stuff. So I'm not saying these are the only thing at all. All have inherent pluses and minuses, not to mention the weight and often required radials, which is radials and I, they don't get along that great. So this is something I cooked up last night. I call it the triad. Power versus portability versus effectiveness. Now, effectiveness is, I couldn't think of a better term, but it's basically all modes plus digital. Um, that's effectiveness. And you'll find that the radios that are portable and effective don't have a power, a high power output. The radios that have a high power output and have a high effectiveness 
are not portable. So you really only can pick one, right, or, or choose one set of operating for a given radio before you can really like, oh, I, I, I don't know of a three. I don't know of a, a radio that has all three. That is both portable, totally effective on all modes, plus digital and power, and has power. It, it it's it's tough right i'll wait in the chat if somebody thinks they can have one but so i've got two three crossover areas right an 891 plus an audio interface right so cabling where's my little you got a little usb dongle or a box the actual right way to do it with with the little tuning knobs that connects to the back of the 891 you've possibly got a tuner you've got a separate battery you have to take because the 891 doesn't have a battery that gives you a 100 watt and effective station. Flip that around, you want an effective station, you want it highly portable. Now you're looking at like a KX2, an X5105, something like that, and an audio interface, right? So I'm using the examples for, um, I'm using the examples of different radios here so that you think about like, well, I have to have a power supply, I have to have a tuner, and if those are all inclusive in the radio, it's likely not a 100 watt radio. So you don't have the power. Yeah. What was that? Solid information, but my generator is running the fridge in a box fan. <laughs> <coughs> Tony made me laugh there. Tony said, solid information, but my generator is running the fridge and a box fan after a hurricane. I can't really, I can't really complain with that. Uh... Yeah, put the triad diagram in the middle of a ring of dollar signs. Also, not not bad point. This is uh, often a lot of gear to be able to have a fully effective 891 out in the field. A portable solar panel, a portable battery, a portable tuner, a portable audio interface, and a radio to do 100 watts, right? Not to mention a laptop or a tablet or whatever. So uh, that's just my thought on this triad. This is something I've been playing around with a little while. You know, effectiveness, power, and portability. Output power. A bug out pan adapter. <laughs> exactly. So the HF conundrum kind of explained it a little bit. You want a 991 or a 7300 in a rack or something portable, but that is going to weigh a ton. You know, hope you don't have to walk far. Um, or you want to walk and you want power and you want functionality, or you just want to pack, pack super, super light, right? So these are more of a problem that you're going to run into with HF than with VHF, UHF. March asks, are there jobs in ham radio that you can get in the, wor the work world? Yeah, uh, go be an RF engineer. Go be uh, a double E, uh, an electrician, an engineer, an engineering electrician that works on radio equipment or designs and develops radios. There's plenty of those things out there, not to mention you can go work for the multitude of ham radio companies out there. You can go work for the ARRL. There's all kinds of things. A lot of um, science-y stuff, though. RF engineer, antenna builders, that kind of stuff. So kitchen sink rig, take all this stuff uh, in this picture. Most of it, not all of it. Probably not be dragging the micro bid X out for you. Rack mount, smaller base station, 7300, tuners in the radio, single USB interface, awesome, a delicious disaster uh, pan adapter or waterfall, right? All that's in the 7300. Not good to carry, not good to carry at all. It's heavy, right? And then you probably throw a VHF, UHF radio in the rack, antennas to match, pick your poison, 100 watt output, you can pretty much run anything. Uh, a laptop, right? Because you want to do these delicious digital modes like Winlink. And at least a 12 amp hour battery, but that's really not cutting it for that amount of stuff. And you definitely have to have a solar panel and a controller, right? So there's that there's that whole kit, right? That's that's heavy. That's going to be something that you're going to cart around in a car, open the hitch up or a truck, pop the gate down, put that box there, and that's kind of your your setup. Portable but fully featured, right? So backpack portable, kind of. 891 some audio interface it could just be uh, a bunch of cabling and one of these usb jobbers here right this will require much more messing with windows though so keep that in mind uh nathaniel 80 through 10 end fed no tuner needed what is on my slide right now uh 10 amp hour battery or less but yes ye suffer operating time 
and you can offset that with flexible solar. But I say tuner-free NFED. Tuner-free NFED would be great. You could do that with the previous uh, setup too, but yeah. Um, plus, when uh, Ham Radio TV says plus one on HF, I stopped asking what rig the person is running because they always seem to say, I see 7,300. <laughs> oh, Evan. Two bucks because my hair is on point. It is. It's pretty good. I got a, uh, a haircut a couple days ago. I went the high fade all the way up. So fully backpack portable, KX3, KX2, or an X5101. You, you've got a tuner in that case in the radio. You have a cat USB connection, but you'll need audio cables or an audio interface. I would use a USB sound card. Possibly have a Windows tablet and uh, hopefully with two USB ports or else this won't work. And QRP antenna, right? A loop might be okay, but it's gonna be heavy. You can go back to that NFED. In fact, where's, Ugh. here's a really good little portable emergency NFED right there. That's the Chameleon um, MCOM 3, I think it is, right on. And then spare battery or three amp hour battery, you get the idea. Last but not least, the ultra portable I was only hiking and a disaster happened around me. Uh, QRP CW rig like my little MFJ 9200, right? <laughs> this is more just a joke than anything. And you can run a CW key, some wire, maybe a tablet, like a paper tablet, like one of these guys, uh, for tracking all the emergencies going around around you. So I, I hope you get the idea. It's kind of a complex situation the emergency situations you could find yourself in right you really do need to factor in what's local to you we heard a lot of people talking about hurricanes um that's really actually much harder than the stuff i would potentially face with earthquakes and wildfires because water be bad for radio um so you'd have to be set up somewhere not necessarily outdoors but maybe that's beneficial you have flooding problems that's also water be bad for radio there's there's all kinds of things, emergencies localized that you have to deal with. So the best stations are the ones that that you know well and you know how to get on the air consistently. For many, this is just going to be VHF mobile with a decent power supply um, and some HTs, right? Keeping all that going, right? Having the programming on the radios with the, the channels you need so that you can hand it to somebody and say, go down the street, go to Mr. Johnson's house and check on him. He's a mile down the road. Uh, he's running on oxygen tanks, right? Does he have enough oxygen to get him through the weekend? I always use that example because it's a really important one. And, um, you know, keep all that going is a big goal just in itself. So kudos if you're doing that. If you've got batteries that you get out there and you, you trickle charge them and you keep that tabbed out or topped off, that's already a step in the right direction. So make sure you keep that up. Um, HF is incredibly valuable, but there is a much higher, like, summit to cover when you go to hf to be not just able but efficient and successful at it so i expect that to take a little bit longer i don't know why my dog's barking hold on i'm gonna close the door thanks dog i'm trying to do the conclusion here to the top okay so i'm going to illuminate illuminates the Collins Boop. and why don't we go to the wide shot here I think that's old oh no cool let's go back to them Collins so if we've got anybody that wants to call in has some thoughts otherwise we'll just um oh let's see there we go otherwise we'll just field a little questions in the chat and then we'll head on over to discord for the live chat reminder we're still doing the meetup. I'm really excited. I got. To, I'm always thinking about this meetup. I can't wait. I'm thinking about Hamvention all the time. First time, right? So, I'm gonna be a kid in a can of store. I can't even can't even comment on that. Uh, but the the micro bid X giveaway will be two weeks before that. So anybody that didn't catch the beginning, I and I know I mentioned it, and people were asking, and I already got a bunch of private messages asking about it. So, yeah. So let's see, Travis. I just turned into this late, so I'm sorry if I'm asking something that's been asked. But I bought a BFF8 HP as an emergency radio. Is a handheld sufficient, or would a base station benefit me much more? So it's a combination of, I did talk a little bit about it. You have 
uh, tactical versus strategic comms. The BFF 8 HP is going to be more of a tactical comms. You you can just operate with that and make connections to other people and and, tr and route traffic, whatever. But a mobile's going to be more effective because you might have two different receive and transmit channels on a mobile. You also have 50 watts of output. Usually that's kind of the, the midpoint, the high point of where you want to be. So a mobile's great if you're going to be deploying somewhere or you're going to be in a home setup, have a mobile on your you know table where you're going to be writing down information, run your computer tracking, who's hurt, who needs help. Said Mr. Johnson down the street needs oxygen, right? Or he needs a generator so he can run his machine to create the oxygen. So the BFF-8, it's a great starting point. Um, I would probably recommend multiple HTs. And it would make sense to have them similar so that they can all be programmed the same, easily refurbished with whatever parts, batteries to swap out, antennas, whatever, because it's all going to be the same. So you can have a nice little collection of stuff that's going to be usable. Uh, just stand on your roof with HT. There you go. Wyoming ham is te checking out, buddy. You take it easy. Appreciate all the support. I have a question on an ohm meter. Where should I have the setting to check for ground? Um, continuity checking. You There's usually a line. Where is it? Where is it? Don't mind my face. Set it to continuity. There it is. Set it to continuity and um, connect to ground and then check your uh, check whatever lead, what you think is ground. Okay, we got a caller. Hello? Caller. Entry notice off. Are Entry you there? notice on. Um, yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. What's your name? My uh, name here is D Justin. Uh, call sign is WDAEHT. Did you say G H T? W D A E H T. Oh, E H T. Got it. Okay. What's uh? You got a question? Yeah. Yeah, I was wondering about the uh, Yezu eight fifty seven D. What's your thoughts on that for an emergency radio? I'm not Putting a big that fan. Putting in some like a to go box. I'm no. not a fan. Well, no. Why is that? It's it's an older radio. Um, I feel like if you're gonna have a VHF radio, then just have a VHF radio, UHF radio, and an HF radio separate. And there's a mm -hmm. better radio that's HF made by the same company. It's the Yesu 891. So I I would recommend 891. Having, yeah, the 891 is a better HF radio across the board to the 857. No, is, I forget. Is that one uh, really small, like the 857 do? Yeah, it's a, it's relatively the same size. The A ninety one might be a little bit longer. Mhm. Mm yeah. So when was the eight fifty seven D released? A D released? Did they yeah, stop the selling 857 them? Yeah, the eight fifty seven D. Oh. No, they're still selling them. Yeah, I don't no, know when it was originally sold. released, but it's it's been around for a while. Not to mention, mm. I'm not a big fan of that screen. It's got a pretty cramped screen to work on. Yeah, see, for me, I, I like something small. Um, I'm picking up the VX6R by Yezu. I'm, it's a little bit of an older radio, but it's got some uh, pretty good reviews on it. I think that's a pretty good, at least VHF, uh, HT. Not very good uh, battery on it, though, 1,400 milliamp hours on it. Right. I mean, the if you're comparing size, the 857 is, is relatively the same size as the 891. But the A91 is a mm. much newer, more recent radio with a much better receiver than the 857. Mm. I'll keep that in mind. Now, what about something like the 818? I know that's they got a battery on that. Uh, yeah, so the 818 is kind of a very small upgrade to the 817, right? And that battery is yeah. not that appreciable. Um, it's kind of a big radio yeah. as far as QRP goes. It doesn't have a mm -hmm. tuner. I did not include the 817 mm. because I don't I don't really view that as a a contender in comparison to something mm -hmm. like a, a Zaiju, which is cheaper than the 818 now, um, and mm -hmm. that has a tuner and an antenna analyzer built in. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it, I don't know. I, you can find an 817 and a good deal. More power to you. Get it. 
Um, one of the other problems is since it's yeah. an, mostly analog, you need to add filtering if you want to have that capability. It usually doesn't come loaded with filters. Mm -hmm. you got to buy that extra. So. Yeah. Now, what about small form radios if you had to choose something else besides like an 891? Is there, I mean, other contenders? I know Yezu makes a – most of their radios are pretty small, but I, <coughs> I didn't see a lot from ICOM uh, when I took a look. Not sure about Kenwood. No, you you've nailed it. You you nailed it exactly. There really isn't a well-sized HF radio um, on the market right now. I'd say the 891 is no. probably the best-sized HF 100 watt capable radio um, with a very decent receiver on it. The problems, as I mentioned, same problems with the 857. It doesn't have an audio interface. It doesn't have a battery, and it doesn't have a tuner. The tuner is easy to mitigate. You just use an antenna that you can either adjust for tune, like the Wolf River coil or, you know, whatever, a cut dipole, resonant mm -hmm. dipole. Um, but the lack of the audio interface is a bit of a pain if you want to try and do digital. Yeah. Yeah, that's not good. <laughs> I didn't know they didn't have that. on. The, that's both 857D and 891 don't have the audio interface. Pretty much no radios have an audio in it. They have, they have audio in and out, but that means you're going to have to have a separate mm -hmm. box to be able to balance the, the levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, does the 891 have a built-in tuner, in, or not tuner, uh, like CW, or do you need a separate box for that? A keyer? It has, it, the... it has, yeah, it has a built-in keyer. Okay, good. Yeah, um, even little tiny, even little tiny guys. Oh, you can't see that. Woo! It's my stealth uh, one. Even the little MFJ that I held up has a built-in keyer. Most most little radios mm. all have keyers these days. Unless you're building something. Yeah, I, I'm not scratch. on YouTube right now. I'll have to go back and look later. No problem. No problem. <laughs> yeah, I got the IC706 as what I have right now. It was given to me by another ham, and it's a it's a nice little thing. Mm -hmm. uh, ICOM, uh, I don't I don't know if they ever released. Um, you know, like a successor to it or something, but most of their radios, they're, they're just way too big for, you know, trying to use it for portability and things. I mean, IC706 is about the max size I'd want to get on a radio. Uh, particularly for, like, a portable emergency type radio? Yeah, yeah, sure. in, in general, if I'm going to take it out and portable it around, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm also, I'm, I don't know why they don't make them, but I, I'm surprised there's a lack of, like, HTs that are, are made H for like HF, you know, this single band ones. Uh, I never... just don't know that anybody, I just don't know that the market exists for that. I mean, you, yeah, there I probably mean, isn't. technically, if you, if you get right down to it, the uh, KX2s and KX3s and the Zyjus, the X5105, the X5105 has a PTT button on the side of it and an internal microphone. Mm -hmm. This is an HT. You could connect a, a hamstick to this and, drag a radial and you could talk into this like a like a ht that's part of the problem is you you aren't so with vhf uhf you are a part of the the ground system for that radio you can't really mm -hmm. be for hf band so you'd be dragging a wire behind you if you were trying to go walk in mm -hmm. mobile yeah gotcha uh, i think somebody said that, that radio up there uh, yeah, I was the the eight. Uh, so this is the X five one zero five. I got you live now. If you want to hold that up? Yeah, this is the X five one zero five, and it's got a PTT button right on the top and an internal microphone, and so you can oh, just wow. PTT on it and hold it and talk. I don't know why you necessarily do that. That's not a fun way to operate because you're literally going to be dragging a radial connected to the antenna off to the back, which is a little ridiculous. Um, but people do it. I mean, people mm -hmm. used to put. There was called uh, the I mean the term walkabout, which is the origin of that uh, MFJ 899T multi-band vertical. That was designed to connect to the front of the Yesu 817 when it came out, and people used to put an Alice pack on and they'd mount it on their chest and they'd have that thing connected and they just walk around mm -hmm. talking on it with you know that little piddle D output but you know sun cycle was different they had fun they could you will be able to do that again in 5 years or so yeah the person in your comments who commented uh Yezu VX uh something it does have um it, it does have uh you can mod it for 6 meters oh, there you go i mean 
I don't know that I would be operating six meters in an emergency. I don't think that's going to be a. Good, yeah. I don't know that's going to be effective. I think somebody said the eight fifty seven was little... uh, created in two thousand one, released in two thousand one. Oh, two thousand one. Yeah, that's an old radio. Nothing wrong with oh, an old radio. IC706. I just, no, I just I mean, the think IC706 it's not. Six is pretty old. Yeah, I, I just, I'm not a big fan of the eight fifty seven. I know people love it, and I don't have a problem if you like it. I just, I'm not a fan. I have a radio that kind of looks like that X five one zero five that you have. It's it's a old CB. It's um, it's a oh, CB cool. that's meant to go in a car, um, huh? and it's got that weird PTT on it. Um, kind of kind of similar. I think yeah. I've seen that X five one zero five before. Uh, it's been in a lot of my videos, and MFJ currently sells it for the Z Zaiju company. That's you know Chinese. All right. Well, uh, anything else? I'll probably be watching your video later. And, All right, um, cool. I just caught the tail end of it. So. Thanks right. for having well, me on. Appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for calling in. We're going to go to the live Discord after this, so take it easy. Okay. What's your Discord? How do I? Uh, can you put that in your comments? Uh, yeah, we've got one of the admins that's dropped the link. Hopefully somebody will post it. Did we get okay. it? Are they still there? I don't see it. Did it not get posted? Um, it should be in the description to this video. Do not see it. Uh-oh. Okay. I see multi-streaming with restream, but I don't see it on there. That sounds about right. If someone would be so kind as to drop that link in there. That would be nice. I do have Discord. Let me copy this. That's the wrong one. This is the right one. I put a accidentally put an apostrophe on there. How do you like the FT uh, two DR? Had that radio for a while. <laughs> I love that radio. I did a review on that radio. Yeah. Uh, I, well, so there are glaring downsides to that radio, which I covered in the review. The audio on that thing yeah. is real bad, um, real bad. Yeah. <laughs> but but it is a yeah. good radio as far as functionality is concerned. I I think that the oh, yeah. uh, I think that the APRS in, interface on that is one of the best ones in radio. Oh yeah, I have the THD seventy two. The APRS is I did too. Not my favorite. I hated using APRS on that thing. Hated it. I won't sell it though <laughs> because I like to do uh, simplex satellite, and that is the only HD in recent years that will do uh, dual simplex or full duplex. Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting the DX6R. Uh, hopefully, the Yezu. It, it seems like they're gonna release a, a next radio after that. It seems like with the recent price drop of that radio, that's kind of my guess. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Well, I think I'm gonna wrap it up here shortly. It was really good talking to you, and uh, hopefully that link works yeah, that I posted same, yeah. in the chat. Maybe we can yeah, talk maybe we'll catch you on the air sometime. Okay. Cool. All right. Take it easy. Take it easy. All right, thank him for calling in. All right, so we're gonna do the do the Patreon thing. I think this is uh okay, good, should be good. Uh, just want to say thank you to all the patrons, and I really appreciate all the support going forward. So William Horton, Chris Ebert, Carrie Blackwell, Jason Brown, Jason Siebert, David Dancero, Danny Miller, Anthony, Franklin Lewis, Brad Snyder, Gareth Broadhead, Dennis Dunderdale, Justin Blackburn, Garrett Larson, Michael uh, Piccarini. Jonathan Franson, Kel, uh, Ben Kellum, Dennis Mickelson, George Gaini, Andy, Kenny Miyamoto, Ron Thorson, 86DM Dennis, my buddy out on Twitter, Mike Baxter, not the TV show fictional dad, Devin B. Hedge, Mark Chase, Julian OH8STN. Big shout out to Julian. This is uh, all up in his uh, wheelhouse, this stuff. So go check his videos out on YouTube. Raymond Cracker, Geraldo Kelso, Ronald White. Corey Sheldon, Brad Nadal, Jason Hunt, Ronald Pelkey, Ronald White. Did I have him in there twice? I do have him in there twice. Ronald White twice. Wyoming Ham, Thomas, uh, Thomas Strickland, and the Brew Crew. No name shout out is is no. He's gone. He's he's no name forever now. <laughs> anyway, we're going over to Discord. I'm sorry about the weird funkiness in the video. We'll get the description sorted out so that people can watch some of this stuff and on when they're watching it after the fact. But yeah, just. So many things. Appreciate all of you. Thank you so much. I'm super excited for Ham Invention, so I hope you go and come say hi if you see me out there. And show me around a little bit because it's going to be my first time. Okay? <laughs> Take it easy, guys.